So um, one, one thing I want to talk about is the product categories page. So if you click on the first link there, that is a, a page that we've been using for a long time now at GitLab. And to in the beginning, it was a way to tell folks, especially within GitLab, um, what each product area is working on. And so, for example, we always tell people who are triaging issues and so forth, like, oh, you know, assign this team label, blah, blah, blah. So that this page has has grown in usage. And one of the one of the uses is that there's this uh, thing called um, categories as well as stages as well as um, features so there's a hierarchy so if you click on the other thing there um, which is a link there there's departments stages categories and features so departments are dev versus ops and then stages which are the seven stages or, or I guess there's nine now if you count everything there's categories and then there's features and then at one point there was um, capabilities and I don't know why we've, I think, I think folks in product marketing and working with Sid said that they didn't want to have that level of complexity. So basically um, there's these four right now. And so if you were paying attention in Slack about like half a year ago, you, you saw like, I think it was Mark Fletcher was, was working with Sid to get everything into something called Features YAML. Um, so that's, that's also related there. So if you click on Features YAML, it's a really, messy list right now at the moment of, of a lot of features and um and and the part of this taxonomy and then so we're, we're slowly cleaning it up and so there is a bunch of uses for this um for these four categories and in particular features yaml so if you click on features yaml you'll see um things like um if you just search like say say for example an like issue board or something there, there's a bunch of like attributes, um, and and they're all they're all really interesting. And so for some attributes, we'll say like some really obvious things like um, is it in uh, which tier it is in. So that that's pretty obvious uh, why that's useful. Um, and then there's things like who are the competitors. Um, uh, there's even like an uh, attribute for like ROI and stuff like that. And the reason why there's all those attributes is that this source of truth features.yaml is driving a lot of different um, pages on our website. A lot of the product marketing facing pages. So for, for example, um, it's driving that product categories page. Maybe not obvious. Well, it actually wasn't before, but now it is. So that, that's good. And then it's driving things like the, when you go to uh, about.gilab.com, there's things like it explains the product and there's like uh, a pricing page, a product page, and then it pulls in all these things. So, so it's driving a lot of those things. And then there's um, uh, there's product comparisons with other competitors and so on and so forth. So that's why you'll see uh, comparisons as well. Like you'll see like GitHub and like um, another, like Jira and stuff like that. Um, so if you search for issue boards, um, there's one entry there and then it'll say like, GitHub is partially, Bitbucket is false, um, Asana is false, Jira is true, CA Agile Center is true, Zebia Labs is true. So, so all that is driving all this other uh, things. So it's a bit crazy right now. I, I, I don't know the future of it if we're gonna keep using features YAML, but it's, it's um, I think it's, it's one improvement because I think we have a categories YAML. I, I believe so, I'm pretty sure we do. So that's already a, a improvement from just having features YAML. We have a categories YAML. And um, what else was I gonna say? So this, this was brought up because um, Sean pinged me on letter B on a recent plan categories change um, that John Jeremiah, so if you look at uh, the product categories page, it shows you like all the stable counterparts and all the other departments, right? And so product marketing for plan, actually for the entire dev stage is John Jeremiah, if you notice that. And so, um, uh, so I've been working closely with him to um, clean up the categories. And so you'll see things, for example, like we have our categories are the big one, our project management, the big ones are project management and agile portfolio management. 
and we have other things like Kanban boards, which is sort of weird. Like, why is why is that feature called out as its own category? And that's just to really differentiate it and say that's a um, it's a category and not a feature, even though it's sort of not really true. Um, but we want to be able to do like comparisons and, and communicate with the industry that that this is a thing for us. So some of these are driven by multiple needs, and that's one of them. Another one is like service desk, for example, and that's sort of weird for a category again. Um, so we might roll that into a different category in the future. And then we have things like uh, value stream management, requirements management, and quality management. So that um, is also illustrative of the purpose of these categories in that we actually might not have any features in these categories, right? So for example, um, value stream management, we, we know what we want to do, but we don't have actually a lot of features there at all right now and even less so for say requirements management and quality management we don't even know what's really our vision and you know that's something um, on my homework list to do um, and i've been working on the past couple of weeks but those areas are we just are not competing there but the fact that we're already putting it in to our product categories serves multiple purposes one of them is communicating to the industry like we recognize these things we care about these things if you want to contribute or you want to you know send us an email about it and ask us about it which customers do do um, then it's there and so so that's it's serving one purpose um, and it's also a signal for example right here it says on the product categories page it says value stream management requirements management and quality management are planned 2019 so it's telling the market that um, you know these are the things that we're interested in next year so that's why um, it's, it's serving all of these purposes um, so, so that's all that to say that won't impact day to day, um, your work, uh, uh, we're still building features and it won't even impact as I know right now, the documentation. So like, the, like you can think of like, where, where would it even impact? Like even documentation, I don't think there's a clear plan yet, especially from a documentation team on how we should align categories. Uh, I think it would be nice, but it, it's, there's just so much debt to clean up from a just categories perspective and then the product marketing side. And then, you know, we hired a new CMO recently. So I expect there's a lot of change there um, that is gonna impact the website and maybe impact some of these categories and so on and so forth. So there's gonna, uh, so that's why it will probably be a while before it will really impact uh, this this team here um, but it's just it's just good to know how how we're communicating with the wider community and so so the so the one thing I can see perhaps it would matter would be like when we're naming things right like when we're we're, we're we chose the word epics and like it took a long time and then now we're the next thing we're gonna start naming is like are we gonna call them sub epics and I think we, we don't want to do that and um, are we gonna, when we do requirements management, uh, for example, are we gonna call them requirements? Or are we just gonna call them issues? Because we're not gonna, we're unlikely to invent a new thing, a new object to satisfy the requirements management um, piece, right? And so that that's would be relevant here. Um, so I wanted to, to just highlight that. Uh, if no questions, Sean, you're up. Yep, uh, just a couple of things. Um, the first one is that uh, we renamed functional group updates to group conversations since the last one we did, um, but we also uh, made what I think is a very good change, which is that they apply to the whole stage group. So the front end, the back end, the uh, UX product management uh, quality people working on plan rather than just a team, which is like the plan back end team. Um, and um, so this is our first one since that happened. Um, the way I've been doing it historically is using GitLab pages and this um, JavaScript library that lets you write your slides in Markdown. Um, I'm open to changing that, but it looks like we're doing that again this time. Um, Pedro has volunteered to help out with the um, uh, conversation uh, so that like even the presentation part is more conversational and it's not just one person going through the slides. Um, if anybody else would like to help out there, um, please um, post on the merge request. Otherwise, like, you know, um, 
feel free to post stuff. I'll be like working on this throughout the rest of this week. So um, if there's anything you think we should include that's notable that we've done in the last eight weeks or that we're going to do in, well, I guess the next eight weeks, but maybe, <laughs> um, maybe that's a bit too far out um, in some cases, um, then um, let's mention that. And yeah, uh, Victor, I think you said you were away for that conversation. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, Pedro and Annabelle's out, I see as well, which kind of makes sense because it's two days before Thanksgiving. So I'm assuming it'll be quite a quiet one anyway. But um, yeah, I'll see if other people are interested in participating too. Um, I'll be up for that, Sean, by the way. Okay. Excellent. In the conversation. I'll be updating the content. I already got the things. I just haven't gotten to it. So I'll be up right. with a couple of highlights and then I'll be up for participating in the conversation. Perfect. I wanted to ask, what did you feel about yesterday's create, the format of having the conversation jump across three people? Was it good or? I haven't actually watched it yet. <laughs> I missed it. You mentioned, it. you mentioned something on the create. I think you will watch the slides then. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I read the slides, but I haven't watched it yet. So um, yeah, we just I, split it up into three stages and we each took sections. So how did it, how did it feel for you? As you were part of it, it. Felt, it felt natural. I think we were expecting more questions at the end, but I, I mean, that also means that we covered a lot of ground. I don't know. Cool. But it was okay. it was smooth and and it was it was uh, we covered pretty much each part um, very well. So I think it was it went well. More more than three people might might get a little bit more hectic. Yep. So <laughs> I, I guess I guess we have the 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 three of them. Of them so. Yep. Sounds good. Um, the other one is just a really minor item. So. Um, uh, throughput labels are a thing. Um, <laughs> throughput labels is probably the wrong term. We're tracking throughput as an engineering team. Um, what that means is that we're just literally counting the number of merge requests by team in different categories. There are some questions about like um, how those categories work. So for instance, we don't currently have one for um, documentation, um, but we probably should have a separate one as opposed to putting it in like backstage or feature or um, undefined, because it's kind of really its own specific thing. Um, but those feed into those charts, which I've linked to. Um, I personally am not going to be using the charts for much initially. I think the idea is to just start tracking it and getting the data and then go from there. Um, but um, if you create a merge request, um, just try and make sure you include the plan label, first of all, because um, I'm not even going to see it if it doesn't have the plan label, probably. Um, and um, one of those throughput labels, if it applies. Um, if you include more than one, that's fine. There's like a priority ordering, so like community contributions, also a feature, um, will count as a community contribution, um, for instance. Um, but yeah, there's, there's not really much to say on that right now. Um, I just wanted to. Um, uh, Pedro has asked if it's a small change, is it a feature proposal? So feature proposal means any positive, uh, no, that's not the right word. Um, yeah, feature proposal also covers enhancements, I guess, is the best way I would say that. Um, yeah, like, exactly. So we're actually that's... considering renaming the label to just feature um, because feature proposal doesn't really make sense for a merge request as much as an issue. But um, that, yeah, we, we sort of discussed whether we wanted to track that separately from an enhancement, and I think we decided we didn't care right now. So what, what's uh, backstage? Is that like tech debt or? Yeah, backstage is tech debt, but also stuff like, um, uh, uh, gosh, what's a good example? Um, so I've been using it for things like, um, say, Yaka makes a change for epics in EE and she needs to make an equivalent change in CE. You could say that's tech debt, but it's not tech debt because we haven't actually accrued any debt yet because we're doing it straight away. Um, but it is a backstage change in the sense that no user will ever notice this change. Um, this is like um, just work that we have okay. to do that is... Um, uh, so that I, I would have thought that would be another feature proposal or one because um, the first one was uh, feature. I mean, I don't really yeah, well, so, so if the EE merge request is a feature proposal in this case, but Yaka needs to refactor some common code in CE as well. So the, the separate CE merge request, the CE merge request itself isn't really a feature because CE doesn't change behavior. It mm, just changes okay. like its internal um, structure. That's, that's what we mean by that. Okay. Um, tech debt definitely fits in backstage as well. Okay. Just to be clear, backstage is like a superset of tech debt for things that aren't. Right. So it's it's very code specific, which I think is is maybe yeah. Basically, the, the it means point like, of this exercise. Yeah. 
yeah, I think essentially it means like if the merge request wouldn't have a change log entry, then it's probably backstage. Mm, that's a good that's a good way to think about it. Um, okay. Because our, our danger bot. Um, Andre has asked about multiple team labels on MRs. Yeah, there's a question here um, in the issue. Um, I've already commented there, but um, yeah, I wanted to hear more of your thoughts, Sean. I mean, um, especially because we discussed there. But if, is there anything else that you want to add? Because I definitely want to have both of us in sync. Yeah, basically, all I'm trying to express in that issue is that, like, I don't think we need to, like, care For that overlapping. much about it. Like, yeah, if, if some overlap, it's not going to be that many yeah, just, that overlap. Just double and count, it's fine. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's probably fine. <laughs> like, um, it's, like, there are some legitimate cases where things might overlap, and I think that's, that's okay. Um, maybe if we ever implement label sets where you can only have one of a particular label, right. but maybe if we change these to custom fields, for instance, the team, then uh, that would be a non-issue. Yeah, like this won't be solved until we the, the tool forces it to be. Right, exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we should be wasting, uh, sorry, wasting yeah. that term. Um, spending too much time on um, uh, the tooling around that that isn't right. native to your lab because I think it's kind of an edge case. Um, so yeah, that's... Um, that's all I had. Uh, Kushal, over to you. Yeah, so I just uh, wanted to uh, discuss around the design uh, proposals that we have in mind for scrolling the timeline of Code Matthew. I believe it is already under discussion, like what approach we want to go through with. But since it is scheduled for 11.6, no matter which approach we go with, like having a button to scroll the timeline or having the scroll bar, it would require backend effort uh, for the both uh, type of uh, design that we approach with. Like it would need to hit API no matter whether we scroll or whether we click on the button. I think that uh, if, if we go with the button approach where we would click on next or previous just to shift the timeline by the duration that we already have to a step ahead or a step behind. In that case, uh, uh, there might not be any backend work needed because API already has support for query params uh, for start and finish dates. For the epics but if we do go with the scrolling part then uh, it, it will require some effort both from the front end and back end because uh, we would want to assess how much user is scrolling and how much we want to show instead of you know just user basically scrolls a bit and then entire timeline ships one step back or one step ahead so just basically wanted to start conversation regarding the ux of uh, how we want to proceed with this i think we're leaning away from the infinity scrolling because it's just going to be really janky when things pop in. Um, on that note, though, I am still drowning in discussion regressions. Um, so I haven't had a chance to look at this, and I'm out next week for like 10 days. So I, this wasn't marked as a deliverable, so it wasn't really high on my priority list. But um, wait, is it? No. OK, I got it. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, label is missing for deliverables, but uh, milestone is set to 11.6, so yeah. Right. Um, I think it's going to be a button, but I, I don't see the UX being finalized in time for this release. Okay, let's, let's look at, I'll share my screen. Why don't we, why don't we use this time to, 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 to manage the portfolio management stuff? So, yeah, we still have a lot of time. So. <laughs> um, so this is a great feature. It just goes to this board, if you noticed. Um, so so we're, we're doing this, we're, we're, we're going through this, which is great. Um, so I think Kushal is still working. So, so we're sort of cheating for Kushal and I guess Felipe maybe, where you folks are still focused on portfolio management. Um, so if that's the case, um, for, for, for portfolio management, it would be, this one will be highest priority and then going down here. So if we don't get to this one, I think that's fine. Um, and because we do still have, for example, the promote one, I guess there's, that's only back end remaining, right? And those I'm just looking at. So, so Kushal, do we need to rearrange anything? Or are you going to run out things to do, which you never want to tell anybody that, but. <laughs> Uh, so you, in, in case uh, we are unable to uh, do this uh, scroll mm -hmm. timeline thing for roadmap, what we can do is that either we already have something that needs to be prioritized and fine with that one, 
or I can include uh, one of the items from our epic refactor and include in the studies because uh, out of the items that I'm covering for 11.6, right. uh, this one appeared to be the major one uh, okay. earlier today. When, uh, and I you just wanted this. to have a good handle on the UX because it's a major one, yes. right? That's totally, that yeah. totally makes sense. So, so yeah. why, don't we, why don't we do this, Kushal? Um, let, let's talk about this one in a second and I put it in our agenda um, and, and have that be like the big deliverable even though we want it to be small. Um, like like the big one that that is is crucial, and then and then these this one the UX is pretty much done right. It's it's just copying the UX from the other things, and then this is the UX is done as well. So um, I'm, I I just I want to leave this here because it's in the list, and then when you get to it, um, let's insert the tech debt things, not tech debt, the, yeah, the refactoring thing that you wanted to do. Um, so let's not let's let's not move this. And then so so for Annabelle, that's the same message for you, right? So um, this would be the highest priority for UX design. And then I think we talked yesterday. Well, you're working on sub epics anyway. So um, so don't worry about like getting this ready if it's if you don't get to it. Does that work for you, Annabelle, as well? So you said that you're you're away next week, so we need to make sure. Yeah, that works. Okay. Um, uh, who's the UX that tackling the attached an epic to an epic? I don't see anyone assigned though. That that should be Annabelle. So do you want me to assign to you, Annabelle? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, and so yeah, let's talk about that right now. Uh, um, so this one is what did I? Oh yeah, promote issue. Okay. So yeah, let's talk about that afterward then. So this one is, um, the reason I created this one is because we really want to be able to, we already have this, so this is, this is not new. So maybe I should add this to the Epic as well. Um, we, we've already been talking about Epics of Epics Forever and Animal's doing, been doing a really good job of doing the design and thinking about all the edge cases. So it's, it's ongoing work. The reason why I created this separate issue is we really want to be able to ship something really the, the smallest thing as soon as possible so that we can demo it um, for an analyst and, and get on a report um, very soon. So that's why, um, and, and these reports are once a year, right? So if, we, if we're able to demonstrate we have functionality essentially for where, where this would be fall, falling is, is if you go back to here, like product categories, and if you look at, um, uh, if you look at if you look at this, which is uh, agile portfolio management, and I don't know where this goes to. Okay, this goes to a product page. Um, okay, so there's a lot of words and no links right now. Um, but then, agile portfolio management are supposed to be doing these things. Um, but what really matters at the end of the day is there's like a couple of key features in portfolio management that, that analysts and customers will mark highly on. And one of them is having multiple layers of, um, of, of things, right? We were calling them epics. So, so customers will call them like, or different tools will call them like epics, features, issues, stories, tasks, and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, just having the ability to have multiple levels is what's crucial to us scoring high on this report. And so we, we, can't, we, ha we wanna help the analysts check that checkbox. And so we can't really do that right now. We have, we have epics and then issues. So that's maybe like a, one layer. And then we have tasks under issues, which is like half a layer if you think about it. So it's not really convincing. And so in talking to prior marketing and sales, we're saying that or prior marketing, John especially asked me like, can, can we ship something in time for a demo so that we can score high? And so my thought is that we're, we're so close in terms of a design and we don't need to be able to do the whole thing with the roadmap view, the visualization. Can we just be able to um, ship the minimal functionality? And even though it's not going to be really awesome out of the gate and it wasn't going to be anyways, but the fact that we can have multiple levels, then that would enable those folks to check the checkbox and enable so, us to demo it. 
so when we say multiple levels is just like an epic can either be a parent or child fine so you can just have two levels of epics basically like you know this is a parent epic and it has these children or this is a child epic and it has this parent um would that be fine or do we, like, I'm, I'm a bit confused about how many levels we have and how many level extra levels we need to get basically i think uh what i'm the, the working sort of number i'm using is like five levels um because what like like you know it should okay, be, so it should be should at least one level then that's like four right like, and, and the reason I'm, I'm coming up with five is pretty arbitrary because three seems reasonable and you want to have more than three right and then like four is an even number and five just like looks like a number. <laughs> like that's what i mean by arbitrary and I mean, five's prime, so it's a better building block, so it's I guess. It's a prime number. And it also, if you look back to one of Animal's earlier designs, it, again, it's going back to, uh, you know, strategic initiative and then uh, feature and then, or maybe epic, right? So strategic initiative is like the CEO thing, right? And then the executive thing, and then breaks down into like maybe three, four, or four epics. And then, you know, those are like departments. And then, you know, each department might have multiple product managers or project managers. And then they build down. So maybe like five. I'm just thinking of like, um, you know, like, a, like an org chart almost. And so that, that's where I'm getting five from. And then for this issue specifically, we don't actually need to show those five layers all on one page. We just need to demonstrate that it can be five. So that's why in my proposal here, I'm saying, what, can we just have a, like the ability to add here? So if, pretend this is an epic right in my screenshot here. And just to add something, and it, it's not an issue, you just add an epic. So you can add an epic, you click on the epic, you can also add another epic. And so when we're demoing it, we're just showing that, oh, look, you can you know, add like five exactly. epics, really and that's fun. enough. But we don't actually have to show all five, you know, like literally on the same page. It would be nice, but then that's not what's crucial. What's crucial is that we have functionality that can, you can have five levels. Yeah, but okay, why, so are, why are we limiting? Just to be clear about the limiting. So um, if they are just related, it's fine to do whatever because there's no related just means related, right? Um, for groups, we limited at 20 nested mm -hmm. groups, um, I think. And I would be reluctant to go above that without testing it because the way we calculate the hierarchy um, is reasonably efficient, right? But we don't want to, right? <laughs> we don't want to push our luck, essentially. Right. Um, but twenty should be like. I mean, maybe I'm going to sound like Bill Gates or whatever here, but twenty twenty levels of epic should be enough for anybody, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. so so that my that that's that's another reason why I'm using just the number five is also to to illustrate because I know there's been ongoing conversation about oh, we have to constrain it. Can we can't be totally crazy? And you know, I I. Don't I think we should leave it unconstrained from a user perspective? And then you know, Pedro will probably disagree with me. That's fine. But then there's there's, there's all these you know technical reasons why we shouldn't. So it makes a lot of sense. I, I told Animal yesterday or the day before that um, I think it makes sense because we probably want to constrain it anyways. Um, so let's if we're going to build this here, then we probably need to constrain it because if we don't constrain it, and then somebody adds like a hundred, and then we take that away from them then that will be terrible. So we can't do it. So, so my point being is that this, this, let's build something that's the smallest thing that is possible. And I think the smallest thing that's possible is just literally just attaching an epic to an epic and then having a parent pointer. Maybe you don't even need the parent pointer um, because you, in the demo, we're just going one direction. And then, and then, but the unfortunate thing is we probably do need to build in the constraint somehow just to protect ourselves and that's that's not for the purpose of the demo or the MDC, but it's the purpose for not you know giving the people ability to have a hundred levels of that. What well, what's the the main issue with the one hundred levels or more? Well, there's the the technical constraint is I think that's the the obvious one. Yeah, we don't we don't know how that will perform. We don't know that it will be a disaster, but it seems like <laughs> risky to assume that it will work fine when we know we had performance issues with subgroups initially. Um, so from a technical perspective, like Victor said, we'd rather 
not impose that constraint on someone after the fact, but right. have it there up front. Yep. And even if it's even if it's a fairly arbitrary constraint, like if people right. are clamoring for like more than twenty or whatever, or more than right. five or whatever, it's much easier for us to test that once we've got ourselves right. into that situation in the first place. But it does mean that, like Victor said, we're doing work that we may not need to do, but that's fine because we're iterating. So like, okay, yeah, that was my yeah. point. Okay, this and for you for your why. For UI is also very much more manageable as a first iteration. Right. Well, if we were ever going to show these in like a tree view, um, right. obviously you got to. So, yeah, some. the the UI part, it's it's that's the part that Victor was hinting at, uh, that I have a bit of a strong opinion. Yeah, and, uh, and so I mean, like we can argue that that's separately. a different. That, yeah, exactly. So so right. I think For the beauty of like if they if if you tell me like Sean, oh, it's it's fine if they create infinite epics inside of epics. I, I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, technically, as you said, it might not be the best thing and for numerous reasons, but the, then the interaction and seeing all of those epics together and encouraging people to have that kind of structure, I think that's the um, experience problem. Right. And so, 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 so there's two, at least two points here. So, so there's two discussion. One discussion is we just have to do a good job of designing this and, and for like, I mean, visual design, technical design, and like just product design in general. So that is ongoing discussion. And, and, you know, Annabelle is leading that from a, you know, UX design perspective. And then we should all support her in, in, you know, what, what that is along the way. So that's quote unquote, one stream of work that's ongoing and that should be high priority because, you know, that's strategic. And then, so I see this particular issue as a sub stream of that mainstream of work that we need to do as soon as possible. And so that's why I purposely created a separate issue for it. So to, to highlight that fact and then put on the milestone 11.6. So the demo is gonna be January 18th, I believe. And so what I've been telling people is that if we do this in 11.6, obviously it will be available on gitlab.com and that's great. Um, if we don't have it ready for 11.6, and we do it for 11.7, it will still be available likely if we, um, if we, if we meet the freeze on time and everything, right? So, so that's, why, um, that's why I put it as, as high priority 11.6, but I wanted to inform the team that there is a buffer there, um, but we wanna do this as soon as possible. And it's also the reason why, um, if you look at this, it's sort of inserted in some other things that we said we would wanna finish. So, so that, that's where we're at. I have a question regarding the epic. Can, can an epic be, can an epic have two parents? Ha, huh, that's a great question. I, I just pinged Annabelle and Pedro last night. I have not checked my notifications. Uh, right now the answer is no, currently. Um, well, no, 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 uh, no, no. Right now the answer is there, there's no design for it yet. So, so, but my, my assumption up to last night was that was the answer was it shouldn't have more than one parent. I want to, I, I want to challenge my own thinking, but I, I'll let Annabelle and Pedro answer that right now. Oh, I didn't get that. Is it on Slack or did, was it an I, issue? I, I put that in an issue somewhere last night. So, <laughs> oh. okay. I'm thinking no, but uh, I need to read the, the issue. It should only have one parent and multiple children only one parent right, right right like a like a tree like a exactly like a tree yeah is there any use case that you were thinking andre that it might be helpful to have multiple parents no i was just thinking about in terms of ui whether we'd have one parent or multiple that was my question okay <laughs> thanks yeah so uh, um I'm, I'm thinking whether i should start branching off to a new topic probably not um so uh, on, my, on the re crazy reason why I think, oh, why can't it have multiple parents? Um, let me, uh, yeah, let, let me not disturb <laughs> the brain because it's like, uh, I, like let, let's, let's, okay, let, let's at least figure out, make sure that everybody's comfortable with this because this is important, like I mean, mm -hmm. delivering this. So, so like, is everybody comfortable with this from a design and like implementation perspective? Is it reasonable that we can ship something in 1.6 at latest 11.7? Does that make sense? Yeah, if we're just doing this basic kind of copying of the issues, mm -hmm. uh, I, I could look into something else, but right now that seems reasonable. And like you were talking about a pointer to the 
parent issue, oh, that's not necessary, but we could just add it in the sidebar. Like we have, you know, we have that milestone thing on the issue. We could add something to the epic. Yeah, like the design wise, I think it's, it's we can just reuse that. So that should be obvious, but um, my, my, my thinking was that you could, we can literally recreate this whole box and call them epics and put them right underneath. Right, I was thinking either that or just literally do this and you can paste an epic as well, but then we have to like change these words and these counts, which might be messy. So that's my first, you know, UX pass at it. So, um, but yep, that's it. So if that if that's fine for everybody, um, I really want to talk about multiple parents, but I'm going to control myself and <laughs> maybe- Oh wait, talk. sorry, just one more thing. Um, right. Now might not be the time to talk about it, but I think it would be great if we could finalize the UX this release so it could be developed sooner. I mean, I know we have that buffer, but I don't really like to push one, right? our luck with that. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, no, of course. Yeah. So, I have a few more days once I finish all the regressions, um, and then I'm out for like 10 days, and then I come back. D Pedro, is there anything specific that you, any opinions you have on this right now, or do you want to think about it? Or... <laughs> I'm sure yeah. you have a lot. Of... No, the, I only have one. It's uh, not showing more than one level. Uh, that's the only thing. Other than that, you can do whatever you want. We're just doing one level deep at a time, I think. That's the bare minimum MVP. Show right. a direct child and that's it. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that written there. Um, well, I mean, that's, okay. that, that's a suggestion at least to, to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, if, yeah. if, if that's what you're thinking, I'm, I'm, I agree, yeah. I think it needs think... to just show one because if we start thinking again about like showing the whole tree, then that gets into the, the broader the design you know, discussion. Design. Exactly. I don't yeah, want to make exactly. something and then change it. Yeah, you know? right, 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 right. Other, other yeah. than that, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't have a strong opinion of above or below I mean, if, if we have a box, uh, as, issue, as Victor was, was suggesting, like maybe have a box of epics below the issues, um, it might be slightly easier to miss if you already have something like this and you might right. miss that feature. Uh, the That's same better. could be said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or put it above. The same could be said if you turn this box into epics and issues. That could also be easy to miss. I don't know, but I, I don't. I don't have a really strong opinion right. either. What, like budget. Or... What do you think? Will the issues the the epic will have more issues or epics? Because if if it's less epics than issues, I'll put the epics first. Because then it's less yeah, opaque. Sure. Oh, jump of yeah, issues. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And the other, the other point I wanted to make in terms of UX is I'm, I'm totally fine with one level and I completely agree. Uh, from our perspective to implement, I think we just need some guidance on how to show limitation once you're five levels deep or N levels deep. How are we going to show yeah. the user that and add any more there? That's just sort of a Just don't show it. I mean, that would be a terrible exactly. experience. Yeah, yeah, just put the limitation 20 levels deep and don't show anything. <laughs> I <laughs> never get there. <laughs> so we yeah. can... We can the box but then they'll be asking where's my box yeah i think that's for a good group right, right. <laughs> for starters that, that that'd be fine uh yeah, I, if, much it's literally, if it's like again to, to me if it's literally just an mvc and our level of shame is really low or high or whatever direction it's supposed to be um then then uh i i think it's it's fine like even just sticking a box above or below i think it's fine because in, per, per my purse, like to me, that we're going to come yeah. up with something amazing, anyways, and so we're going to come back and reinvent it anyway. So it's like I don't see it as a huge waste of time or anything like that. The fact that we put that, and of course we're going to have to refactor it later on. But to me, that's not a that's not a bad thing because our our goal is to show this off to to an analyst and have have us be on a report. So there's a lot of value in that. You know, that's something new for GitLab, right? So. But I think there's a lot of value in that. All right, I'll take that. <laughs> I like uh, your idea. But sorry, I, I like your idea, Annabelle, of putting the parent epic in the sidebar, right. uh, because that mimics what we like, what people could be expecting in terms of the structure. It's it's unfortunate that it's separate from the child, uh, from the children, but um, but we'll fix it later. That that's yeah, how I exactly. see it. 
Like, yeah. I think, and I see in the future growing that to the depth. So you'll be able to see not just the parent, but you'll be able to see like the five levels up later, like way later. I saw, I think I saw that in a mock up that Annabelle showed earlier. Right. So that, that, I thought that was really very useful and simple, which is nice. <laughs> One uh, cool thing that uh, it would be nice to have if people reach the limits of uh, five, 10, or 20 epics is to send uh, something in the usage ping or something to us. So we know, okay, there was this one instance that reached 20 epics or these 20 instances or 100 instances and so many people are reaching the limit, uh, that could be helpful um, for us to understand that maybe 20 is uh, too, too few uh, epics. We're doing five though. Right. Or five, yeah. You keep saying was, 20 and you're freaking me out. Yeah, I, I was saying 20 just because, yeah. But uh, okay. it can be five. <laughs> I don't care. Are we, are we saying five now and as, as the limit? <laughs> I, 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 I think technically I it could be more, right? Sean can comment. But I think UX-wise, it might be wise to have five because maybe you don't want more than five. Like you don't want like 10, right? Because there was also the UX concern about not letting users go crazy, right? So I'm fine if you want to just set it at five or three. Like, no, if you say three, I'll argue with you. But like five, I, I would. I think would not argue. I, I I think that we can. It's we should let users do what they want, uh, if technically feasible. But the experience should encourage a certain behavior. So, like, if we design the experience to encourage having just one or two levels deep uh, and it's like we're on purpose making it not that easy to have a 100 level deep tree I think that's already enough but if users want to go through the trouble of creating 100 right. epics deep um, unless again I think it's just technical uh, okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> well I, I don't want to drag this too long so let I'll let Annabelle and Pedro fight that out because I'm, I'm I, I was getting from Annabelle before that she didn't she wanted Annabelle I'll just let you answer did, did you want to like hard not let customers do users more than five or do you want to do what Pedro was saying like encourage not more than five I think I originally did want to put a limit on it but that's when I was thinking in terms of sort of strict agile pyramid style um, right but I don't think we need to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards, you know, let them do what they want. Uh, but for this, this tiny portion of the whole epic, I think sure. limiting it to five, I quite like that idea because then if we do expand it, then it'll be a good thing. And so like you said, okay. if we go down, it would be a catastrophe. I don't know what people would do. Okay, so let's, let's just, 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 let me just update the issue right now. And one more question, Andre said, um, would you expect an epic to have more epics or issues? I think issues, but was there an answer to that? Would you know, Victor? I would say I agree with Andre. Well, there's no, there's no answer. I don't think there's a clear answer because we don't know how people are using this yet. Um, but as a project manager, would you think it would be more issues? Yes. Well, yeah, cool. unless it's the it's the first yeah, level it's, it's the inner nodes of the it's if, if, oh, yeah. yeah if it's a, if it's the lowest epic like the leaf epic then yeah. they have a bunch of issues. But if it's right. the first one, it can have a lot of epics inside and no issue. Right, right. But in that case, that's fine because exactly. I, it sh you should always have epics first in that case, right? Because that, that will always work out. Because if you have a lot of epics, then you'll have like no issues. That you could probably like, do some interesting statistics. Like if, the, if, there's yeah, a high number of, if you have a high number of child epics, then the probability of having a high number of issues is low. If I'm just thinking about the tree, literally, I'm just thinking about the tree. I think you're, I think it's a safe bet. So just just epics first, right? Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna write that in the uh, the issues, or just randomize it every time you refresh the page. I like that. I'm, I'm just kidding. Just flip a coin. <laughs> I agree with with Andre. Epics, epics first. Uh, I'm just not sure, and I'll I'll let you, Annabelle, figure out what's the best 
interaction design if it's to have uh, merged lists uh two separate lists uh like epics above and issues below um i bet there there's some things to explore there okay so i don't know if i have to drop in nine minutes and i'm frantically trying to slack somebody but uh, anyways i'll move on to the last topic which is uh promo issue to epic quick action so I just wanted to ask uh, where we're at on status on that issue, because I thought we were actually going to merge it for 11.5. Um, and so I just wanted to know that if it was, if it was blocked or something like that. Yeah, so Victor, uh, Yarka and I worked on that one. Uh, the front end and back end were done, like the, the basic functionality of the feature was working, but uh, Yarka figured out like the back end changes that requires that entire promote action to go through were quite complicated and uh, it, it required some basic, uh, larger changes basically, uh, which is why it got uh, slipped from the release. Uh, but again, uh, Yarka would know better like what what was the blocker which uh, pushed it uh, out of the release. Thanks. Um, and so I'm just, I'm just as clicking through. As far as I'm aware, it needed a bunch of um, changes. Um, okay. Like just uh, the, the, the type of thing I was talking about earlier, where it needs a uh, refactored stuff in okay. the, um So Yaka is well. It looks like it was last pushed to like pretty recently. So she's still working on that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm clicking through the environment. I see she she put something in 24 minutes ago. So that's great. As, as long as it's it's not it, it's ongoing work. So that's, that's yeah. It's not stalled. Okay. Yeah. But it's not blocked by anything. It's just, it's just needs no. more work. That is great. I mean. Uh, if you look at our kickoff doc, that was only one that missed uh, the only direction issue that did not get merged. So um, I, I think people like Sid and, and Yob and Mark care about that. Um, so that that's great for the plan team that that we were able to to do every one except one. So I think we had like five or six direction issues. So it's really awesome that we got everyone but one merge. All right, and. So I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, just asking one question. Um, from the previous milestone, we added the possibility to filter by none and any. Which, which one is the new option? Is it the none? They're not new. They're just renamed. It was just like no label before, and now it's just N-O-N-E. Um, and then actually, there were some cases okay. where I think it was missing. And so there was just some gaps in various places inside GitLab, like like search bars and like issue boards and stuff like that. And then a, a couple of community contributors. I, I think one of them is a, two of them are core team members, I think. Jacobo and George. Yeah, so uh, I basically reviewed a few of those community contributions. Uh, so right. we introduced any option to milestones. So earlier it wasn't possible to look okay. at the issues uh, which, which have at least any milestone assigned. So right now, what uh, up until then, what you could do is that you could select milestone filter and then select none, and it would show you the list of all the all the issues which do not have any milestone. But what if you want to look at the list which has milestone assigned, no matter which milestone? So that's where any comes into the picture. So that was the new feature that got added. Cool. Thanks, Kushal. That makes sense. All right, so um, anything else we, we should talk about? I'm, I'm going to stop myself from talking about multiple parents. Um, that's it. All right, I will put this up on YouTube. All right, thank you, everybody. Bye now. Thanks, everyone.